Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the start of this very special weekend, uh, an annual event for us here at the TAB, the uh, annual Thanksgiving Festival Weekend, uh, hosted for a number of years now by our band, and uh, we're just so thrilled that you are here uh, this evening. I want to welcome our, our territorial leaders are with us uh, this evening. Would you just greet uh, Commissioners James and Carolyn Nags? Would you just stand quickly? And uh, visiting leaders for the weekend are uh, Commissioners uh, uh, William and Marilyn Francis. And we would like to just uh, acknowledge you this evening. Would you just stand, please? Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> the, uh, the Francis's will be with us uh, tomorrow in our worship service. And uh, uh, we uh, would encourage you to come and uh, worship with us if you uh, do not have uh, a regular place of worship. And we'll enjoy some time tomorrow as we continue to uh, praise the Lord. I just want to acknowledge, uh, because they flew in just a couple of hours ago, but Martin Hunt's parents, Majors Colin and Maureen Hunt, arrived literally at about 3 p.m. this afternoon. And so you don't need to stand, but we do want to just acknowledge you here. And uh, thank you for coming. Uh, Majors, you will notice that we put Martin's solo at the beginning of the service, so you can take a nap after that. So it's... <laughs> planned for you uh, so you can at least see the solo before you uh, fall asleep. Uh, well, this weekend has been planned uh, really uh, to uh, uh, honor the, uh, the wonderful ministry that uh, Ivor and Jeanette Basanko have had in, in our territory. And uh, we just want to uh, uh, let you know how excited we are this evening uh, just to uh, uh, play and sing uh, many of Iva's pieces. If you uh, read through your bulletin, you'll see Iva's name printed nine times uh, in there. Uh, maybe a little too much, I don't know, but nine pieces of Iva's tonight uh, we'll be providing for you vocally and uh, through the band, and uh, really is a tribute to uh, their ministry. You can't uh, acknowledge Iva without acknowledging Jeanette as well. They, uh, they come as a team. Uh, they're a true partnership in marriage and in ministry and uh, for many, many, many years have uh, faithfully served the Lord through music, through the Salvation Army. And so uh, we just want to honor them uh, this evening. There is a bio in the program that you can take time to read through uh, that will uh, show you their uh, depth of commitment to God and uh, to the Salvation Army through music. Uh, their son Richard is here as well. We're thrilled that that he's flown down from Salem, Oregon. But I'm going to ask uh, just Ivan and Jeanette, would you just stand because we just want to greet and acknowledge you here uh, this evening. Well, we're in for a great night of a praise and uh, a thanksgiving to our Lord, and we're going to start by inviting all of you to become part of our one a corporate choir this evening as we sing, To God Be the Glory. Would you stand with me? The band's going to give us uh, an introduction, uh, so listen to this exciting beginning, and then let's uh, give praise to our Lord by singing this uh, wonderful hymn together, To God Be the Glory.
Please remain standing. Our band's executive officer, Colonel, Colonel Don McDougald, will lead us uh, to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we think particularly of Thanksgiving, and we have so much to be thankful for, so much that you've showered on us in this country, our homes, our families, all that you've provided for us. And as we think about those blessings tonight, we especially thank you for the blessing of music, for how much it can inspire us, it can lift us up to heaven, it can raise us to the highest levels. And we thank you for the musicians that have rehearsed and planned for this evening. We pray your blessing on this music. We pray this, your blessing on each of us. May we leave tonight inspired to serve you faithfully. We thank you for all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please be seated. Uh, I hope you all have a program. Uh, if you don't, they're at the back or someone will get one to you. And please greet Commissioner Nags uh, as he comes and uh, talks with us. Thank you so much, Major Norton. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight, say amen. 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 So am I. You didn't have to twist my arm to be here tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> what a thrilling thing it is to come for this wonderful uh, annual Thanksgiving feast of wonderful music uh, from the band, the songsters, and all the soloists. Uh, it's always a thrilling occasion. Carol and I are really blessed to be here with you. And I know that you're going to enjoy being here with all the excitement and all the beautiful music we're about to hear and enjoy and appreciate as we worship God together. Amen. Amen. We're going to start tonight, uh, we're going to continue tonight with a march uh, Ivor wrote entitled Rocky Mountain Centennial. Uh, and as Ivor comes, we would understand that this was written for the Inner Mountain Division uh, some time ago. Uh, and then we're going to follow this up with uh, Martin's cornet solo, uh, which Ivor wrote for Martin. Now it does make, one's, uh, make one scratch one's head with one's left hand. Why a Welsh composer would write a solo for a British, a cornet soloist, English, thank you, keep me straight, and call it Irish variations. <laughs> well, you'll have to ask uh, Ivor later. So we, uh, we uh, greet you tonight. Let's welcome the band again for Rocky Mountain Centennial, followed by uh, Martin's cornet solo.
when the commissioner asks a question, he has got to be answered. <laughs> and it's a good question, don't you think? Well, I was in the Irish Guards when I served my Queen and country. So I've been there several times, but I haven't been back for about oh, 50 years. <laughs> but it was Chris Mallet that asked me to write a solo for Martin when the youth band, the Southern Cal youth band, went uh, on tour to the UK. And uh, certain tunes come to your head when you want to write variations. And the tune of Irish, which is in the first book of the supplement, um, a song I always enjoyed playing and singing, and it uh, serves the purpose well for variation solo. There are four variations, and uh, that's why it's the Irish variation, because the tune in our tune book is called Irish. A few scholars call Scottish. I still have got to call it Irish, but you know. <laughs> And it's, it's a great tune, and uh, it's not really a solo for the cornet, it's a solo for cornet and band. They've got a very important part to play in this. And so Martin played it, oh, when I wrote it, what, 15 years ago? Bef <laughs> He's getting old, he can't remember either. <laughs> <coughs> so, are you ready? He asked me to talk, if you could give him a rest. <coughs> You, you sure you're ready?
Praise the Lord. Mom and Dad, it was worth coming over to hear that. I think so. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Ivor. Thank you, Vance. Beautifully done. And I think we heard something of the Irish Guard in there. Uh, I, we heard something of the Irish Guard. That's right, of course. The extraordinary imagination of Ivor Basenko certainly includes brass. But then also he masterfully brings together vocal music in a wonderful way. This next item entitled Wonderful Words, perhaps the fuller title would be Wonderful Words of Life because music tonight is all about the wonderful life we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let there be no mistake about that tonight. We heard this first, Carol and I heard this first, when Jeanette was singing it. And what a beautiful opportunity we have tonight to hear our great soloist Barbara Allen uh, render it to us. And John Doctor over there on the trumpet as well with Ivor at the keyboard. Let's greet our trio tonight as they bring to us <laughs> wonderful words.
I know you're happy to be here tonight, listening to this uh, sensational music and enjoying for certain the presence of God. We now turn to the uh, Pasadena Tabernacle Songsters under the leadership of Martin Hunt. Yeah, I only paused in case Ivor was getting in the scene again here, but not for these two items, maybe later. And the songsters are going to bring to us A Quiet Place, followed by Boundless. The Pasadena Tabernacle Songsters are one of the featured guests, guest groups at our International Congress in London, England next year. And so these two items, A Quiet Place and Boundless.
noteworthy to the uh, second song of the Songsters is that uh, it was our divisional bandmaster whose musical genius uh, uh, made that piece work for William Booth and the rest of us. Please stand and take our readings. Bandmaster, God bless you. Kevin Larson. And again, the multi-talented uh, Bandmaster Basenko now moving to the keyboard and passing it on, <laughs> passing it on to his uh, handsome son. Uh, a piano duet, Ivor. Piano duet. We have two pianos. How does this work? I see. Okay, good. And it's called "In a Boat." From the pet a petite suite, <laughs> from the petite suite, petite uh, Debussy, <laughs> lovely, a little sweet. Like Thank you. Ivor's fabulous. Just to know him and to stand next to him <laughs> is a thrill. And uh, what a joy it is. Did you want to say anything more about I this? I, I think so. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Bam, for, for inviting me down. Actually, when he called uh, and asked if I play a piano, uh, play the piano, I my first thought was, have they changed the piano since I last played in public? Um, it's been quite a while, but um, we're very fortunate. My mom's a very good cook, and uh, this was sort of our evening thank you. Uh, she's very fond of French impressionist music, so we would, in our, our gratitude, sit down and play a piano to it. So. Uh, I think we're reliving that, but also thank you for everyone for coming on behalf of the family. So we hope you enjoy this.
I just want to ask uh, in this auditorium tonight and in our chapel here, band, songsters, people who are visiting with us tonight, how many of you have ever played or sung under Ivor and Jeanette Pisanko? How many of you have ever, and those who have played or sung under them, how many of you have ever heard their music, Ivor's music, played or sung? You've been here tonight, you've already heard it. <laughs> yeah. Not a trick question. This is your legacy. We want you to know that. We appreciate very much. And Richard, it wouldn't have been special this weekend without you being here because the whole family is together. I have more than one or two friends, I think, but I would like to call two of those friends that I've known for a few years. Um, my hair is going gray. Jim still seems to say pretty dark, except he's breaking his arms now. And uh, as we all mature, but I would like to call the divisional commander, Doug Riley, and the territorial commander to the platform at this time. <laughs> and if you would, uh, Ivor and Jeanette, would you come up and join us here? I have to tell you that as I watched you playing the piano with your son, I was a bit jealous. I thought, what could I do with my sons on the piano? And chopsticks would be a challenge. <laughs> but in your program is the bio on these two wonderful people. I hope you've had a chance to read it. When you see accomplishments of eight years of age, uh, joining the senior band and playing in the National uh, Youth Orchestra, Her Majesty's Irish Guards, and uh, and it goes on and on. And then Jeanette being the core pianist and songster pianist at age of 14. And then uh, the, probably the most important line in there that you need to read is, as God would have it, that Jeanette was singing a song and needed a skilled pianist. <laughs> and Ivor was that skilled pianist. And uh, that's where they met and joined together. And it's been a melody ever since. Wonderful God-given melody uh, ever since that day. You uh, next year will celebrate 40 years in America. From coming over as divisional music directors in Pennsylvania and Delaware Division, and uh, from those years and spending 22 years as our divisional territorial music director and director of Christian education, um, you've seen in there over 200 camps and institutes that they have been a part of. That's unbelievable. What that says to me is influence, impact, change lives. The two of you, Ivor, I, I look at you and um, I'm wondering how many songs does this have, guy have memorized in his brain? He can go to the piano and play almost any song from memory. And Jeanette, I think of all the songs that you must have sung as a soloist and have led as a songster leader. But the most important thing that I would say is that, from me, my perspective, is that you have impacted and invested your lives in the youth of this territory. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Music was not, was, was, it was more than, than the ministry itself. You know, it, music was just a part of it. The two of you, if you've never seen Jeanette, you will often see her sitting alongside one young girl, giving her the what for, <laughs> if she needed it, correct? But they invested in the lives of the youth of this territory, and as a result, many of us have been touched and influenced by the two of you. Uh, you're committed to excellence, your friends are faithful, you're fruitful, and you're wonderful salvationists. Um, I have to personally just say thank you for your ministry to Colleen and myself and the impact that you've had on our lives. So this being Thanksgiving, what a great way to thank God than to thank him for the music and the talent that he's given to these two to use in the ministry of music, not only in the Salvation Army, but around the world. And uh, I just want to thank you 
for your ministry, for your years of service, and for your love for God. Um, I've got an award here that I want the commissioner to present to you. Carol and I <clears throat> benefited in the early days of your uh, American exploits. Uh, we were at the Star Lake Music Camp uh, the year you came. We weren't there as campers. We were there uh, for a few of the performances. I think probably Bill and Marty were there as well. And then, of course, we were in the uh, Eastern Pennsylvania and Delaware Division, where you were God's answer to our prayers. <coughs> and what a thrilling time that was. Uh, what an exciting uh, opportunity we all had. And frankly, you built on uh, the foundation even of the likes of Bandmaster Bill Flynn uh, in Pendell. And, uh, but took it to new heights. Uh, and you brought to the division at that time a level of uh, enthusiasm and excellence that we were so thirsty for. And you showed so many of us uh, what it meant to be a salvationist and to be a professional and to be excellent in what you do in serving God. Uh, so we've known you all these uh, 40 years or so in this way. And what a thrill it is uh, to be here today. We thought you only came over to enrich the Eastern Pennsylvania and Delaware Division. Who knew you were just getting ready to come out to the Wild West and make it all happen out here as well. We want to recognize you tonight with the, uh, we've, we've, we've been celebrating a global a reality in your lives with the different countries mentioned. This particular award is the highest award given uh, in the United States to salvationists. It is known as the Certificate of Re in Recognition of Exceptional Service. These are very rare. Uh, this would be the first one I've ever had the privilege to be a part of. And uh, it's a joy to be here tonight and to uh, present this at the recommendation of your um, divisional commander and a few others as well. It's given to those who are outstanding, distinguished, and have an unusual and significant achievement in quality and length of service in the Salvation Army with high moral character and integrity, compassionate response to human need, um, and in your case, uh, excellence in music. We are so grateful tonight. I'm going to ask the room to join me in celebrating this recognition of you as uh, a recognition of exceptional service in the Salvation Army to Ivor and Jeanette Basenko. That was a part of the program I hadn't told them about. <laughs> the Old Wells. For those of you who know brass band music, this particular piece was written by Eric Ball, then a captain in the Salvation Army in the 1930s. And oh, that was a long time ago. But this was one of the first pieces that Ivor ever participated in and played in and then conducted when he became the bandmaster of the Cardiff Canton Band. And the Old Wells really is reminding us in Genesis 26, when Isaac was on dry and barren place, he needed to see God as the one who would take care of him. 
So he be began to dig again in the same wells of Abraham. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing wonderful water of life. In the Hebrew text, scriptures indicate that the words springing water here literally mean alive or living water. We hear that we humans cannot live without water. God was providing life-sustaining water for Isaac's family, servants, and the herds. This is why God took Isaac back to the old wells and caused him to dig in the same places that Abraham had dug. In his time of trial, Abraham went down deep into the bedrock and had found water so that his people and his family could live. Here Isaac, representing the next generation, could also find the same source of strength his father had found. If we want our lives to make a difference in our generation, I believe we have to go to the old wells of truth where others previously found their hope in God. We must learn what it means again to trust completely in God's direction. His ways are always right and through he does does not expect us to always understand what his plans for us are. He does expect us to believe and obey. See, the old, old song that this variation is written about will change in style throughout. And sometimes you'll think it's finished and you'll get ready to clap, except for another different variation to start. And this isn't much different than the trials or the challenges that each of us face all the time. So the question is, for you and for me, shall we go back to the old wells and dig maybe deeper so that we find the bedrock that is of our salvation? See, the song reads, go back to the old wells where the waters are sweet. Go back to the old wells where joy and duty meet. Sometimes we don't like to talk about duty so much anymore but where joy and duty meet together. The waters of the old wells, will your spirit restore? Go back to the dear old wells and leave them no more.
We'll take a brief intermission, uh, just a few moments, and then listen for the music to come back and be in your place. God bless you.
that was fabulous. The world is a happier place when the timberlists are happy and smile. And didn't they do so nicely? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Manchester, uh, USA was the name of that march by Ben Master Bersenko, uh, named after the Manchester, Connecticut Civil Corps. Thank you very much for that. And now we turn again to the a tremendous Pasadena Tabernacle songsters. Three songs. No. Nope. Oh, now it's Manchester. Oh, I've got a confused diver. No, I apologize. So that was the Montclair Citadel March. That's Montclair, New Jersey. Oh, they wouldn't be happy back east if they learned I'd confuse those two. <laughs> Forgive me for that. And uh, not, you know, we're not in a hurry. We want to hear it all. So now we'll have the Manchester USA March. And after that, I'll introduce the songsters. Thanks so much, Bandmaster. Thank you. 
And with apologies for my mistakes, we now move for the uh, Pasadena Tabernacle Songsters. Three pieces, uh, each written by Bandmaster Basenko. First, I found a friend in Jesus. It's not just a song. It's meant to be a relationship. And then to thy cross I come. You can't come to Jesus unless you've come to the cross. And then finishing up with the trumpet shall sound. And that has more to do than uh, a brass player in the cornet section. When the trumpet sounds, God's calling us home. And we're looking forward to that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the passing the Tabernacle Songster.
Shortly after we arrived in the Western Territory, uh, the then Lieutenant Colonel John Gowans joined us and we had four magical years with him. All sorts of exciting things happened. And many of you who are Salvationists will know that he became General of the Salvation Army in later years. But he was a wonderful, wonderful poet and lyricist. And during those years, he wrote and had published two books of poetry entitled, O oh Lord. They were spoken from the heart to his heavenly father. And Ivor um, did settings of several of those poems and they were uh, called um, Song Cycle, where he chose one or two of them. We are very privileged tonight to have Barbara sing one of those settings of his prayer poems. Just before she does, I just want to point out to you that they're very self-explanatory. One of them, he, those of you who uh, worked in THQ would know that he had a horror of what we call boards. In other words, days spent in, in, uh, in the boardroom. And uh, he, with tongue in cheek, sent an old Lord poem on the, the joys of being in boards all day. And you'll hear that. But the last prayer poem was um, following a, a visit to Skid Row. And he did a soup run. And uh, the last poem speaks of uh, his concerns about the homeless and you will hear it as Barbara comes and shares it. Will you greet Barbara, please?
Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed 
and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. The service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gifts. Amen. 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 Thank you for that beautiful music tonight, and particularly the most recent rendition of the general's uh, verses. So powerful, so true, and so appropriate to us. The band moves next with a precious song setting. When the scriptures say, thanks be to God, for his indescribable gift. The scriptures are talking about Jesus. They're talking about his love. They're talking about his light. They're talking about his heart for you and for me so that you and I, each one can say, I know, Lord, thou art mine.
last item is marching to Zion. And uh, I can honestly say that I started that, I started this composition before any music you've heard tonight. It must have been in the 60s. I love the tune, this tune, great tune in our tune book, Marching to Zion. It's never sung. It's sort of old-fashioned, I guess. There's lots of words. You can't repeat them very often. <laughs> or bits of them, a half a line or something. <laughs> but <coughs> I guess it's out of fashion. And uh, Marching to Zion is one of those great songs I, I played many, many years ago. And I'm glad I did it because I always wanted to write variations on it. And I put down the first uh, the song and fiddle around. And then I left it for years. And I can honestly say it wasn't until last year I finished it. <laughs> and I finished it because I was going to Star Lake. And I thought I'd better write something. <laughs> so I scrapped most of it and started from scratch. And um, I did finish it in time, which is rare. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great tune. And if, how many know the tune Marching Design? Oh, one. Well, you can sing if you want. We won't hear you up here. Uh, <laughs> And, and uh, there are four variations, all very different. The first one is that on the way to Zion, there's an oasis. And uh, we can go off and have a little swim. And uh, there are mosquitoes and trombones of the mosquitoes. And it's a, it's a sort of Caribbean dance sort of thing. Then I go to my own country, Wales, where a lot of the music is in minor key. Or a key before minor keys were invented, actually. And it's a duet between Martin and Lambert. And then <coughs> at the same time oh, when I l really enjoyed this tune, I started playing Chopin. My teacher thought I'd better start playing Chopin. And uh, I did the waltzes and the preludes. And then it came to the Polonaise. And I've always loved the Polonaise. But what an arrogant dance it is. Real arrogance. So the third one is the arrogant Polonaise you will hear. And you hear bits of Chopin in it. The next one <coughs> I wrote, I can tell you when it was, last year, June the 17th. Jeanette had an accident. And I came home, and every day for five weeks, I had to go to a nursing facility. And when I came home, this is, this is it. This was what I played every night, keep my sanity. Uh, and uh, to cool me down a little bit. So that's the fourth one. And then the last one is the march. And you will hear the march in the distance and coming forward because we are all marching to Zion. Hopefully. Right, Commissioner? Yeah. Okay. They've agreed with me, so I must be right.
Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, to Ivor and Jeanette, we love you. And uh, we're so uh, grateful that uh, you've been a part of our evening uh, this evening. And uh, we're excited that Ivor and Jeanette will be with us uh, tomorrow as well. Just take your seats. Just want to say just a brief word of thank you to uh, just a couple of folks before we can go and have a little bit of refreshments. But uh, I do want to give my thanks to our bandmaster, Bill Flynn, who has uh, kind of helped lead the charge for this weekend and has uh, uh, helped put all the details together. And certainly he would want me to recognize the band, uh, the band board, the uh, uh, local officers of the band, too, for their help and support along the way. Thank you uh, to them, uh, to uh, our staff here that have helped uh, prepare uh, the bulletins and the, uh, the refreshments uh, to the uh, volunteer team that helped come and do a beautiful job decorating our chapel to each one. Uh, thank you so much for uh, the attention given to this weekend. We are so thrilled that you've been here to uh, spend it with us in a praise and thanksgiving of uh, our Lord. Certainly, we're grateful that the uh, Nags were with us this evening and uh, we're looking forward to the ministry of the Francis with us tomorrow. We're so thrilled that you'll be with us tomorrow and we look forward to uh, your ministry with us uh, then. Um, thank you too. I just want to acknowledge... Uh, uh, Kevin Larson, our divisional music director, and Major Ian Robinson, who have uh, kind of helped and uh, uh, just stepped in to uh, support with our band. If we can just give them appreciation as well. Uh, Commissioner Francis is going to come and pronounce our benediction right now, and then uh, following, invite you to uh, our fellowship hall. There is some refreshments for you. I know it's getting late, but uh, some of you might need a cup of coffee for the way home, and uh, there's some pie. And then uh, again, tomorrow morning, if you are don't have a regular church home, we certainly warmly welcome you to uh, the tab here at 9.30 is our Sunday school worship service at 10.30, prelude at 10.25, and uh, invite you to come and share and worship with us here tomorrow. So would you stand and Commissioner Francis will come and just pronounce our benediction. May God bless you and thank you for being here this evening. I want to say what a joy it has been to be here tonight. We wouldn't have missed this for anything. And uh, we were there also and your first music camp in Star Lake and all these years later. And uh, Ivor and Jeanette, while we were playing that last piece, I thought of Hebrews 6.10. And I believe the writer of Hebrews had you both in mind. For he said, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Amen. God bless you both. Let's pray together. Father, it's been good to be here tonight. Every note that has been played, every rhythm that has been heard, every song sung goes to your honor and glory. We pray that you will bless us as we leave this high point and as we go back to where you've called us to serve. May the joy of the Lord continue to be our strength day by day. And now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the power of the Holy Spirit, Go with you now and forevermore. Amen.